Hello there, my name is Alden Walker, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to properly fight as a Megalania. Now, and if you drop the mid, change the way you play as this creature, and if you don't agree with everything I say, bite me. We will be going over the arsenal of the creature, the subspecies you should choose to grow, the terrain compatibility, and its fighting style. Further, we're going to go over the type of fights you can find yourself in. Against lower tiers, mid tiers, and also any little in-depth in lower class and higher class of mid tiers. Then before apexes, we're going to look at water fights, and then of course at the end I'll summarize. It will seem that Megalania have received a bit of love from the devs since the last time I did a video on him. For head abilities, we have two options, and we can equip both. The first ability, a Viper Strike that does low damage, but it venomizes the victim. The second ability, a Heavy Bite that has a higher damage output, but just like me, it needs a break every round. As you can see, we have four options for sensibilities. The first one being Twilight Menace. This increases your stamina regeneration during night. Is it possible to learn this power? The second ability are water goggles that most player probably pretend doesn't even exist. All for one and one for roll. Cowardism is our call. We attack a lone creature and watch them fall. Cause when we once, we don't cut the balls. But it's said me that somebody around you reads so much of venom that your will to kill that person increases, and so does your damage output. Your two options for hide abilities, the first one being Streamline, that makes you go sumi zoom in water. The second ability are Toxic Immunity. When attacked, you do not apply the venom and status effect to the attacker. Kinda pointless when you realize there are only so many creatures that can give the status effect in the game. The leg ability is Cut the Dive ability. This is proof that you pass swimming classes. For backlame abilities, we have two options. The first one being Leap of Fate, that might save you one day. And just because it says fall damage decrease, well, don't let me stop you. Go jump off a cliff if you wish to. Maybe you'll turn into that flying lizard. Or, well, gliding. The second ability, a wet feet, that increases your speed and stamina in the uh, water. Sorry, bad habits. Are you a toxic player? Now you got the scream ability to go along with it. Unfortunately, just like my hopes that you can give me a good fight, it doesn't last long. For tail ability... Wait, there's no tail ability? But, but... Doesn't a real-life Komodo dragon use the tail as a baseball bat? What about swimming? Damn devs, missed opportunity. As for subspecies, you need to decide early on what type of fights you're gonna main on. If you're gonna fight mainly water fights, then you should choose the water subspecies. If you're going to mainly fight lower to mid-tier creature, then you should go for land speed. If you're gonna try and fight apexes, then you should go for the venom damage. This is just what I recommend. The final choice is yours. As for terrain compatibility, the Megalania works pretty much everywhere. I will say that against higher tiers opponent, you should try and have a water source nearby, or a dense area. The fighting style of Megalania are more of a tail riding hit and run. Against higher tiers, this will be pretty much useful. Against lower tiers, you should turn the battle into a competition of turn radius. Against lower tiers, I recommend this arsenal. You see, the toxic immunity are kinda pointless when the enemy doesn't give venom. A streamliner doesn't give any decreases to defense, so it's just better to have it, just in case if you need to run. If you do fight a creature that does give venom, then by all means equip it. You are still good in water. Now, fighting low tiers does usually means that you'll be fighting at high speed. Instead of moving around too much, you should slow down. However, that doesn't mean you should tank every attack from your opponent. You have good turning circle and turning speed. Turn the battle into a contest of turn radius, and then you should win as long as you can tail ride properly. As for Pouncers, you don't need to worry about them too much. You can thank your rather low stature for that fact. You see, Pouncer can only pounce after they jump from the ground and then activate the ability. In other words, you don't even need to duck to dodge the ability. If they do manage to pass you, you can either 1. Try to buckle them up, receiving tons of damage in the process, or you can 2. Have a rather deep water source nearby, and then be as kind to introduce them to a swimming lesson. The fee for the lesson? Their life! Also, good news for you, you're just big enough not to be picked up by a Hatsagopteryx. It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. Of course, you are big enough to be grabbed by a Sarko, so do keep that in mind next time you go into water, or before you go into water. Also, at the start of every fight, it will be good to venomize your opponent early on. That way you can make sure that they will run out of stamina sooner or later. The lower classes of mid-tiers 
Ah, oh, manageable. As long as you don't play stupid. At the start of the fight, it is good to use the Toxic Scream. After you activated the ability, you have 10 seconds to get a Venom Bite in. And as you can see, you have a rather long cooldown for the Toxic Scream. So these 10 seconds are important. Now things will be more difficult if he backs himself into a corner, limiting your directions of attack. Even though your stats are close to each other, it is still not enough to win a head-to-head -head battle. You need to win this by other one, do a hit and run with a heavy bite, or get a lot of shots in by tail riding him. Because you're so low to the ground, tail attack doesn't mean much unless your opponent crouch, or at least in the case with taller opponent. Lower classes of mid tier are manageable, it is the higher classes of mid tiers that is a problem. Stat wise, the gap is too big, so you can't win against them in a head to head contest. I would say that every hit counts, however, I would prioritize getting the Venom Bite in first. After all, without stamina, most opponents become sitting ducks. Combine tail riding with hits and run, and you'll eventually be able to lower him down so much and kill him. Of course, accomplishing this are no small feat and not recommended for beginners. And speaking of not recommended for beginners, water fights. Water fights are something I definitely do not recommend for beginners. You see, there are so much more things you need to be aware of when doing water fights. If you don't understand, well then, let me put it like this. On land, you can only perform a set of locomotion. Left, right, forward and backward. The same applies for your opponent. He can only move in a certain manner. In water, you have omnidirectional movement, and so does your opponent. If he can swim, that is. Again, there are so much more you need to be aware of. Your opponent, what abilities does he have? Am I in his line of fire? He's moving this direction, so I need to follow suit, etc. For water fights, I recommend this arsenal. Even though you have all the directional movement, you are still opted to a hit and run and or tail riding in water. In water fights, because of all the information you need to gather, process, and the actions you need to plan and execute, this type of fighting can be a bit too much for beginners. So it's easy to fall back into a head-to-head -head clashing in water, and this is something that you shouldn't do. Try to stay behind your opponent at all times. This will be more difficult to do if your opponent has a tail smack ability. This is why I recommend to not fight Spinos if he has a tail attack. Actually, just don't mess with Spinos in water at all. For Apexes, they are just too tanky, and they only need a few hits to kill you. And as a low tier against an Apex, their tail smack actually hurts. But what about fighting Apexes on LAN? This is something I also don't recommend for beginners. The difference in stats are just too much. What's worse, some Apexes may have the stop ability equipped. One hit from that and it's usually good night. But if you insist on being that guy, do the good old tail riding. I will say in this case with Apexes, having a water source nearby are optional. Be it with or without, there's no doubt you're going to outspeed an Apex. Of course, if he does the same old back himself into a corner to limit your movement of attack, then it would be better to just call off the attack. But if not, just tail ride the creature, dodge their attack as much as you can, and then maybe half an hour later you might be able to kill the poor thing. So to summarize, against lower tiers, stop moving around too much and turn the battle into a contest of turn radius. Against mid tiers, do the same but also switch off to hit and run if you need to. Water fights are basically the same, just at a more difficult level. Fighting apexes are the same, but you need to be a lot more reserved to when to attack, as their attacks are devastating. If you have any specific creature you want me to cover, go to my community post. 
Find the most recent post about the matter, and all the information you need to know should be there. With that, I bid you guys adieu, and I will see you guys later. Goodbye.